Tonight, Henry and I are kind of getting into the maker kit, getting Ooh. a look at it. Henry, the first kind of project that I started working on... Oh. Um, I'll, I'll just explain a little bit of backstory. Okay, here the, we go. The ladies from New Every Day mm-hmm. use lapel microphones. All they, right. They look like this. Okay, so that clips on okay. the shirt. Yeah. And then it goes into a power pack that mm-hmm. this is like basically phantom power for the microphone because they require power. Okay. But the camera only has two inputs, hmm. left and right. So they're stuck with two mics. So recently hmm. they've been doing some interviews and it gets really, really tough when they've got yeah. three people on the set. They can't. They can't mic them. Mm-hmm. They can't mic everybody. So I came up with this little super, super simple. Now, I'm a, I'm a beginner maker, so I'm just learning how to do all this kind of stuff. But I came up with this. Plugs into the, uh, <laughs> plugs into the camera. Sneaky. There it sneaky. is. So it's just a, uh, like an eighth inch, 3.5 millimeter uh, stereo plug. Yeah. And it goes to this breakaway box Look at that, that has four quarter inch inputs. And I've just used uh, Ethernet cable to make it happen. So it's a full connection. There you go. That's there you go. So you plug that into the camera, and then you've got two microphones on each side. So you just find, Sneaky. you know, you figure out who's got approximately the same volume of yeah. speech. And uh, there you go. So that's kind of my first, one of my first builds. I've done a couple other We're, we're so proud of you, Robbie. I so. love, see, I, I go to Say Al. I've told, <laughs> I told you about this place. Yeah, you have. And it's amazing. There's a store on place. the south end of Barrie. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you haven't been, if you're in the Barrie area, you've got to check them out. It's called Say Al. That's where you can get kit like this. Now, you can also get them on Amazon and stuff. And, mm-hmm. and so go through our affiliate links and you'll find yeah. what you need. I am just old school and I love <laughs> going up and down the yeah. aisles and going, oh, that would make a good kit. Oh, that would be a cool piece. Well, that's where your imagination gets in, right? Oh, yeah. And then it's like... Ugh. So then I'm looking, you know, uh, ch- even choosing the type of end that I want for the plug yeah. so that it's a, a 90 degree angle so that it points to the floor mm-hmm. when it plugs into the camera. Exactly. It's those just... kind of things instead of plugging <sighs> in that way. Wow. So, you know, I love that. So being able to walk into a store, I don't know if you've got any stores like that. It's like the old style Radio Shack when just, you used to be able just to just tack everywhere. Aisles. Just... Bits and bobs of parts and so kind switches. Of about this little thing. Oh, totally nerding out right now. That's I so know neat. it's so it's how, so simple. And how long so did fun. it take you to do that, Robbie? Uh, about like, an hour. An hour, eh? Well, uh, once I had all the stuff. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I went you, to the you store. Go shopping. I obviously spent about seven hours in the store and yeah. way overspent. And my wife said she looks starts looking at the itemized receipt and go, "What's this? Uh, it's like how much? Items. How much exactly did you spend on that?" Uh, well. But that's kind of how it goes. Um, but that's that's what it is. So wow. one of the ways though that you can save a lot of money, Henry, Henry is mm-hmm. through a kit like what you were looking at last week. Okay. And the purpose behind picking up a kit is really so that if, because I would go to say Al, one mm-hmm. of these electronic stores and I would buy all the pieces that I need for a particular project. Yeah, you just bring them all in. I would right. bring them all in and then I would build the project and then I would go back and I would buy all the parts for the next project. And yep. There's something to be said about just having a bunch of stuff on hand kind of in bulk because you get into stuff like resistors that are super, super cheap by themselves. Mm-hmm. You don't want to go in and buy five of them. Uh, you might as well get 500. That's buy them in bulk, right? Yeah. Uh, this kit, uh, I'll get you to move your coffee so that we can, we can just kind of take Let's a boot Let's make some here. space. There this you go. kit, we're just going to get into it a little bit heavier this week um, to show you. So this is available at cat5.tv slash maker. You saw it last week, so we're not going to really go through the unboxing process, but you mm-hmm. see we've got resistors. So Many, many resistors. Many, many resistors. So with this, with this series, mm-hmm. our maker series here on Category 5 TV, one of the things that we want to do is we want to start from the basics mm-hmm. and work our way to some more sophisticated things. We're going to get into television repair. Oh, that's exciting. You can pick up a, a flat screen TV on the side of the road because somebody, does, you know, it doesn't work anymore. We're going to learn here. We're, We're going to learn it. here. We're going to fix it. We're going to get a free TV. How do you like that? We might have to buy uh, a capacitor for six bucks. Hey. Aww. Saves you That's buying right. a new TV for like a thousand. <laughs> wow. There's, there's a ton of stuff that you really need to get started. Mm-hmm. First of all, safety goggles. You might as well steampunk them out. I, I you got your safety goggles. I, I feel like you're safer than I am because I'm just here. Yeah. Safer, <laughs> nerdier, all of the above. <laughs> hey, it's not, not a bad thing. You're going to need things like, uh, like resistors. So mm-hmm. what do resistors do, Henry? They resist the urge. They the resist. Power. And I really like how they added different levels of resistors sure. because in basic saying, it's like a tap, right? So I think uh, I remember back in high school when my professor was talking about electricity and resistors. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like you have a full pipe full of water, 
but you can't handle the entire full pipe. So what do you do? You add like a little resistor in this case for electronics resistor for water, you'd have like a little funnel or something. So it kind of reduces the voltage yeah. of whatever's passing through the wire. That's what I, that, as far as I believe that's how I was raised. We're going <laughs> to, your parents have done well that. <laughs> okay. Um, I was not raised in a home where this kind of thing was readily available or even promoted. I was the mm. kid who would take apart the VCR get in a boatload of trouble for doing it. What's a VCR? And then I'm just kidding. <laughs> it was better. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and then put it all back together again, and it would work better than it did before I took it apart because I would clean the heads and the pinch Man. rollers. But, so that was me. <laughs> um, so this kind of stuff, a lot of it is new to me, but I used to build like uh, patch panels and things, okay. audio patch panels, and, and uh, recently I've been really getting into learning to become a maker because I hey, really want to know how to do this stuff. Oh, yeah. I'm a home, homeowner now, and huh. it really drives me mad that I don't know some of the basics of home repair. Hmm. So, then I, so then I started learning that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Now that I can do renovations and fix things and do this or that, yeah. now I'm like, okay, well, now I really want to be doing this stuff. The electronic stuff is really my passion and, and what I want to learn. So, oh. so that's why we're going to be getting into this more. Mm-hmm. So things that you absolutely need, of course, resistors. We're going to learn all about resistance tonight with a very simple demonstration. We've got a couple of relays as well. I love relays. You can That's build exciting. so many fun things <laughs> with those. Uh, and we're going to learn about those later on in the series. Uh, we've got some, uh, some capacitors as well. Excellent. Um, these can be used for repairs. Uh, if you ever burn out a capacitor on a motherboard, you can actually fix your motherboard by having Ooh. those on hand. We've got fuses. We've got uh, multiple different types of capacitors. We've got some uh, some ceramic capacitors as well. Um, we've got some LEDs, some uh, alligator clips, more LEDs. Like it just goes on and on. <laughs> Never ends. These guys, which Henry, these are called potentiom pot- potentiom potentiometer <laughs> potentiometer. <laughs> nice hooked on phonics you, worked for me. Do you have the potential potentiometer? I would have just called it volume knob. The volume just call it knob. Just call it twisty knob. Uh, Jeff Weston and and and, uh, and the crew here at Category Five. We've been talking about it. We're going to start uh, building a, a, a mini arcade game system for you guys. Are going to have so much fun for the Retro Pie. We're going to actually build that. So we're going to need some of these kinds of things and the knowledge that we're going to learn. The other stuff that you're going to absolutely need, 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 and this is to get started as a maker. Mm-hmm. So you want to learn how to do electronics. Oh yeah. The kit just makes it so easy because it's all there. It's all in one you place. Don't, you don't have to. And it's all in one place at Sayal, but you don't have to go up and down the aisles to get what you need to get started. So, yep. so I am excited about this. So we've got batteries and loads of them. We've got a 9-volt battery. We're going to learn resistance with that today. Um, so let's set that aside. We've got some 22-gauge uh, wire in three different colors. So th- this is literally just wire that we can use for soldering stuff together. All right. uh, we've got some battery compartments. for. So we've got 6 volts, 1.5 volts, and 3 volts. We've got a breadboard, which you showed last week. This is uh, oh, that's pretty decent. Hello, breadboard. Looks sweet. And this is for testing, right? So this is so that we can test our circuit, build our circuit, and make sure it works before we start soldering everything together and realize, oh, yeah. <laughs> did something wrong, right? Uh, but I see a ton of exciting stuff in here. It's a great kit. And, and even just the box itself is really nice. It's, so. just ni- it's just nice to be organized. It's just nice to have that because when I, when I, whenever I come home from a tech store, I always have everything in bags and oh, yeah. everything gets all over the place. But even if you do start to run out of supplies, it comes with a nice box. <laughs> so you can eat. <laughs> yes. It's, I'm sorry. Like, I, I, I love things that keep you organized like this. Is there anything here that we wouldn't use? I really don't think so. Eh? Like, there's so no. Much. I would use everything. Like, even like everything. being into like flight sim and stuff. Like, you could use like a lot of these like switches. Yeah, those are some um, great switches. Landing dude. gear up, landing gear down. Is that where you're gonna you're gonna build an airplane? I actually, I actually already have one. <laughs> Just kidding though. No. Um, no, that's exciting though. All right, so we're gonna learn a little bit about resistance tonight. Mm-hmm. Um, beyond our kit. 
what we need is some tools. Um, so I have all right, some of my toolkit here with me. I've got what's called um, helping hands. This is really, really helpful when you are soldering. It's got a little light that illuminates things. It's got a magnifier so okay. that you can see a lot better as you're working on stuff. So you can clip with these helping hands alligator clips mm -hmm. and hold your project as you are soldering. It's awesome. So then I've picked up a wireless soldering iron. Uh -huh. After seeing Jeff with a wireless one, I thought, well, I'll go out and get a, a wireless one because it's so convenient. Just had to. Now, I'll tell you the truth. Yeah. The, the wireless one, I kind of would like to go with a higher, higher grade, like plugged in, because mm -hmm. the batteries don't last a huge amount of time. And when they die, yeah. it just starts soldering poorly. It doesn't get up to There's heat. no indication. Eh? It just starts to happen. Not right? really. Um, and you can change the batteries or you can buy rechargeables and that's fine. Mm -hmm. um, but realistically, as I get more and more serious about this, this, yeah. is, this becomes a handy tool to have. But it's not. It shouldn't be my only solder. Well, that's iron. the thing is that when you're at your desk, right, like your little workstation, oh, you might as well have a hard. Wire yeah, you're gonna have hardwired anyways, right? So depending on your usage. Well, I should. Right? I don't. <laughs> this is should. the one. I, this is the one I bought. <laughs> me. So I picked up the, uh, just a piece of um, like what do you call this? Like scouring pad. It's just happiness. Just yeah, from the just, dollar store. Yep. And I use this when when the solder is hot. Mm. I can just rub that soldering iron on the uh, on that and it just cleans yeah. it up really really nice there you go um, and then we've got some solder here uh, I've got a pair of clippers just and these uh, clippers actually have a uh, a 22 gauge um, oh we can stripper that's so gonna make things a lot easier <laughs> helps a lot yeah some good some um, needles what do you call these or tweezers um, tweezers these are great for holding your project when you're holding things like capacitors. And yeah. They get hot as you're soldering. Nice. I've got a nice little screwdriver that Kingston provides, and uh, these are great. It's good to just have a good little oh, screwdriver. That's nice. for so that's kind of my kit. Uh, oh, but yeah. then the main thing that you're going to absolutely need, Henry, mm -hmm. regardless of what you're doing, is a multimeter. You're there going you go. to absolutely need to be able to tell things like, have you got continuity? Mm-hmm which is the circuit is complete and there is a flow of electricity. Um, you're going to need to be able to tell how many volts are running through something so you don't blow something up. Yeah, And we work. probably will blow things up. <laughs> oh, that's uh, going to be the, the course. best. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Just kidding. No. Yeah. Oh, boy. Um, speaking of blowing things up, uh, we got an email from uh, our viewer uh, who we all know is Orange Man. Should we uh, take a quick look at this? All right. Let's take a look. Orange Man writes, Dear Robbie, and I presume Henry as well. My name's there. It's just invisible writing. It's just invisible. Sa Sasha wrote um, it, so. Orange Man actually provided a couple of pictures for us, so I'm going to bring. Oh, that's good. I'm going to bring these up at the same time. All right. Uh, Orange Man says, "In December, I had an old Raspberry Pi in my workshop in an old cardboard box, not being used. Okay. Uh, I wanted to make the output run on my TV display as a way of displaying videos uh, by connecting an HDMI or VGI, uh, VGA cable to the TV. My mm -hmm. wife is blind, and she doesn't like a lot of wires around." Makes sense. Yep. So I designed it to put inside of a computer chassis along with a power supply. I found a case on Amazon, uh, Amazon, <laughs> which was low profile, um, and, uh, and, and a, oh, it has a switching yeah. power supply, which provides both five volt and twelve volt power. That's interesting that he mentions that. Yeah. We were talking about building this arcade system for the RetroPie, and I said we should get a use a standard computer power supply mm. so that we have five volt and 12 volt rails, mm -hmm. 12 volt for the monitor, five volt for the Pi, yep. and any other kind of peripherals. So mm -hmm. that's cool. Uh, you know where we are because you've got your finger on it. Yeah, of course. Just carry on. Being a navigator here. Um, it arrived on Christmas Eve. Happy belated Christmas. Nice. Uh, <laughs> yes, we had a we had post on Christmas Eve. That's awesome. So I tested it to see if the power supply worked and wanted to know, <clears throat> wanted to find out. Uh, which wire was the plus 5 volts and which were the 12 volts, That's right? where your multimeter is going to so, come So, ta-da! Thank you, multimeter. Yeah. Um, I tried it twice and it worked okay. Good. Um, but when I tried it for a third time to check out a few other things on the power supply, it just stopped working and was uh -oh. completely dead. Orange That's man, not good. Yeah, Orange Man goes on to say, Some time back, I obtained some 286 computer power supplies, which also have 5 volt and 12 volt. Yeah. Uh, this was the same physical size as the one that uh, that was in there originally, and it worked every time without going, going bang. bang. Nice. I got, a, <laughs> I got a picture here of the outer uh, chassis. That's kind of the completed box with the wires sticking out of the back. And uh, Orange Man sends us a little bit of a view of what this bad boy looks like on the inside. 
Henry, if you can carry on with the with the email there. Excellent, because, uh, you know, the reading skills. Um, some time back, uh, you already said that, um, I wanted to use the USB output of the Pi to power a USB hub to give um, me more USB outputs. Yeah, okay, yeah. that's always useful. Um, the output from the audio socket would be connected to a small jack and then connected via a small audio output. And I thought I would do the same as the audio by plugging a very short HDMI lead into the HDMI socket onto the Pi. Sweet. Um, so, yeah. So, the socket end of my converters VGA had a hole cut in the box, so I plugged, a, plugged the uh, VGA to a short cable, but there was some issues with the converter. Okay. Ah. Um, let's see what that was. It was a very intermittent and would only work sometimes. Okay, that's, that's interesting. Real good. Yeah, so I abandoned this idea and was stuck with an HDMI socket. I cut a hole in the chassis and glued a jack in place so I could easily connect an external HDMI cable. Okay. Sweet. But had some trouble. So on Amazon, Amazon. <laughs> Go through our web link. Uh, yeah, sponsor. Um, uh, I cut a hole in the chassis, found an HDMI cable with okay. a female plug on each end. Okay, so I could just, and fixed one end to the HDMI socket on the Raspberry Pi, and the other end goes through a hole in the chassis, so the one right. that I, I'm guessing he cut, with yeah, a yeah. grommet, so I can plug it into the TV. Then right. the kit took about 20 minutes to build. So, like, so in you the see end. the HDMI there in the center of your screen. Now, if you follow that cable coming out of the HDMI, he's got a grommet and a cable yeah. going out of the computer. And then we've got all kinds of great wiring going on here, Orange Man. Well yeah, done. No, uh, and I see a USB port on the front there. Okay, we're almost done. He has a yeah, yeah. brief little uh, paragraph here. So he's been into, uh, into electronics since he was 10 years old, and now he's 60. So that's a lot of experience. Way there, to go, right? man. Like, wow, you got... 50 years on me. Yeah, so so making the <laughs> kit was very easy and enjoyable. The network socket from the Raspberry Pi connects to a short external jack, and the keyboard and mouse are both wireless, which Sweet. saves on the wires, right? Because you wanted to keep... Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, space on the wires. It now sits on a shelf in our sitting room, and I can operate the keyboard and mouse without any visible wires. From Orange Fantastic. Man. Oh, dude, that is and awesome. Thanks I love hearing sharing. these stories. Thanks for sharing, because it really does... It's always great to hear when people use these with such unique projects. It's right? inspiring. It is. And at the same time, I'm looking at this, Orange Man, and I'm thinking, this is a build that you would never... Like, I wouldn't have expected to see this from a Raspberry Pi. So no. you see the motherboard is basically this credit card-sized... Uh, <laughs> um, motherboard in the middle there with a bunch of wires going to it so you've been Man. able to effectively build a computer a multimedia yeah. center with um with this little tiny computer stuck in the middle yeah just put it in the center there and that's just it's so hold great it in with double-sided carpet tape there you go yeah that's fantastic i wow. love it and thank you so much for sharing and yeah. these are some of the things that you know i want to learn like how does all that come together now i mm -hmm. know how to plug cables in and stuff like that but to solder from one thing to the next and and we've looked at the yeah. gpio headers of the uh, raspberry pi a little bit mm -hmm. and you know i know that you know some of them are are like 5 volt uh, power yeah. so i've connected a fan to it to keep it cool and Whew. things like that so you can do all kinds of little things but let's expand upon that yeah let's dive a little bit deeper let's see what else we can do with that